I think people think that reality stars sometimes don't have a real talent. And um, that's not true. I mean, I'm sure a lot of us has proven it. There's some that can sing amazingly. There's girls who can act. I'm one of them. So my manager called him back and he was like, that is Ryan Murphy from Glee. He wants to meet with you. So I met with Ryan Murphy, who created Glee and all these things. And I met with him and he was like, I want you to be on Glee. I need you to go up against Sue. Being on stage, it brings out a whole nother side of it. When you're on stage when the curtains open, you have to go. There's no stop and rewind. I don't want to say who I'm supporting because I feel like when you talk about finances and you talk political, it always starts a lot of drama. Plus, like bloop. Bloop. <laughs> so nasty, so rude. <laughs> you sound funny, Sam. Girl, bye. <laughs> All next on Larry King Now. Welcome to Larry King. Now we're in New York with Nene Leakes. She's a woman of many talents, actor, host, reality star, author, entrepreneur. Nene shot to fame on Bravo's The Real Housewives of Atlanta and has since expanded her TV resume, acting on shows like Glee and The New Normal. She's also found success on the Broadway stage in Chicago and Cinderella. And now she'll be a panelist on the reboot of the hit game show, To Tell the Truth. It airs Tuesdays on ABC. How did that come about? Oh, my gosh. To bring that back. To bring the old to tell the truth back. You know that show, right? I was, so I was we, a guest once years ago. They had a yeah. guest what I did, and I, they guessed it. We right. revamped it and brought it up to the 21st century, and actually the producers reached out to me and my team and said, we need someone like Nene that's fun, that'll tell it like it is, and with a lot of personality. We'd love for her to be a panelist. And so I thought, okay, I need to go and Google to tell the truth, because I totally forgotten it. So I went you were and too Googled young, it. I, well, I was young, but I remembered it when I went and Googled it. And I Googled it, and I was like, Got it. That's that show. I'm Larry King. No, I'm Larry King. No, I'm Larry yeah. King. Who's really the real Larry King? And so we have to guess. Only one is the real Larry King, and only one has been sworn to tell the, the truth. truth. And then there's a, do yeah. they still have a, a celebrity panelist where they wear their, yeah. they cover their eyes? Yes. Okay, I have. To, we're not covering our eyes, though. We so, don't cover, no, no, we don't cover our eyes. The panelists do not, the celebrity panels do not, which is Betty White, who you know. Of course. And she has amazing work ethic. Wait a minute, if love. you don't cover your eyes when the celebrity surprise comes up, what do you see? Well, what happens is when they come out, the three that are, have been sworn to tell the truth, on our show, the reason I said we, we brought it up to the 21st century, we have people like the person who invented the selfie stick. And oh. we have to prove who invented the selfie I stick. Know. We have to prove who is the inventor of Tupperware. So the Tupperware person comes out and they, we have to prove which one of you are the real inventor of Tupperware. This guy's like a fun laugh show. It is. It's it's a, like a variety show. We have a live band that's playing in oh, the back. Oh, the original didn't. The have original any didn't do any no. of that stuff. But this show is amazing. We have on the panel Jalen Rose, who's an ESPN analyst. Who's great basketball. Yes, yeah, great basketball player. He's a nice guy. He's competitive yeah. though. Very nice. He wanted to win. He's competitive. He was like, I'm. I got to figure out who's telling the truth. And then you have me, the fabulous Nene Leakes. And I always think that I can tell who's telling the truth. Have you? How many have you but, taped so far? Uh, we filmed the entire show. We've already the filmed whole it. series. We've filmed the whole series. We've wrapped already. All right, Nene, and were you good at it? I have to say I was 50-50. There's some good liars in the world. So what are you now? You do so many things. Broadway, Housewives. What, what are you? I'm everything. I currently have a one-woman show that's on tour right now. Do I, I don't. Well, I don't like to... Well, I don't I like stand to... Up. I well, it's sort of like that. I don't like to consider myself a comedian, but I like to say I'm a funny lady. I'm a funny lady. I have a lot of one-liners. I tell it like it is, and people love to come out and see my show. My next show is July 9th in Atlantic City. I tell you just like it is. I talk about my husband, my children, the women and producers I work with, women I've encountered, men I've encountered, and I have a great time doing it. You like that. Broadway? Love Broadway. In Chicago, you had to play that, the lady Mama who's... Mama Morton, Mama. I love it. I did, I did Cinderella on Broadway, and I, and I was the wicked stepmom. And I played, which I love because, and I, let me tell you why, when I did Chicago, I did Matron Mama Morton, and what I love about these women, if they are villains, but they have a big heart. And I feel like that's me. I, I feel like big I- Big mama, right? Yeah, I, they have a big heart at the end of the day, and I love that. And being on stage, it brings out a whole nother side of me. Like you have to, you, when you're on stage, when the curtains open, you have to go. 
There's no stop and rewind. Some people who don't like Broadway, mm -hmm. they're not, they're not, they feel it's the same thing every day. But it's really not, right? It. No, it's not. It's different every time. The audience and the is different. audience are different. The audience give you energy. They're pulling for you. They give you a standing ovation. I love it. Ever forget your lines? I've not. But if you do, you better keep going. <laughs> Just keep going, right? You got to keep going. That's a show to do. You can't stop. How did you jump from a, a reality show to all of this? How did that happen? You know, I like to tell people, because so many girls have come behind me, it was timing. The time that we actually launched that show almost 10 years ago. I'm was that the, the first? 10 years ago. Almost was that 10 the years, first Real Housewives? First, first Real Housewives in Atlanta. Right. And I have to say that I'm the only original that's still around on the show. I just think it was when we launched the show. It was, it was about timing, I think. Timing is everything, right? It's everything. And because some of the girls that are still on the show, they haven't done as much as I've done. I have to say it was timing. How did you spin off from it to get all of this? It was... You left the show, right? I, I didn't really leave. I just became part-time. Are you going to go back? I'm sure I will. I'm always there. Because it's the thing that opened up the doors of opportunity for me. So, so you I never, never leave really it, leave, leave it. No, we never really, really leave. But how did, what was the first thing you did after Real Housewives? After the Real Housewives, well, I never left. So right after our first season, I want to say the first thing that came to me was, I don't even know the first thing. So many things came to me right after we launched. I think somebody, the first thing, may have, someone may have come to me about being an author. Maybe the first thing. And then, I don't know, all these things, Donald Trump. You went on Donald Trump, right? Yeah, the Celebrity Apprentice, then Dancing with the Stars. Then I started hosting things, and I don't know, just... You, you, you like doing it all. They just, all those opportunities just kind of came. I don't know if I was, I wasn't really looking. They just kind of came to me. And you were just an ordinary... How did you get Real Housewives of Atlanta? How'd you get that scene? I was in Atlanta, and a girl called me up one day, and she said, producers are in Atlanta, and they're looking for fabulous women that live behind a gate. And I thought, that is so stupid. What are you talking about? And she said, I think you'll be great for it. And I thought to myself, she doesn't even know what she's talking about, but OK. So I gave her my number. And the casting director really calls me up, and she says, I'd love to come to your house to meet you. And I kept putting her off, because I thought, this, I mean, this is so weird. Like, I'm letting a stranger come to me in Greg's house. And I thought, I don't know why. The lady kept pushing, and I said, OK. I'm going to let her come. So I let her come to my house. I thought, I'm going to clean up before she gets here. And I was cleaning up and drinking wine and clean. I was a stay-at-home mom. So I was cleaning up, drinking wine, and she rang the doorbell. And I thought, hi, come in. And she said, oh, my gosh, she has so much personality. Well, I had drank a whole bottle of wine before she got there. And so when she came in, I was so happy and loopy <laughs> and showing her around my you house. Got the job. Yeah, and my husband was there, and I got into an argument with my husband. And she was like, oh, my gosh, she's so great. I want to hire her right <laughs> now. And she was like, who are your friends? And I was like, Kim Zosiak. Sheree Whitfield, Deshaun Snow, and she hired everybody. <laughs> and we all became the Housewives of Atlanta. <laughs> More with Nene Leakes right after the break. Yeah. We're back with Nene Leakes. She's on the new To Tell the Truth. It's back. Betty White's a riot, ain't she? Yes, she is. She's a hoot. You know, I want to tell you this story where one day I was, I, I got all these calls on my phone from this guy. He kept saying, my name is Ryan Murphy. And I thought, this is, I don't know a Ryan Murphy. And he said, I am the creator of Glee. And I said, um, this, I don't know, this must be someone playing on my phone. So I said to my manager, I'm getting a call from a man named Ryan Murphy. He says he's the creator of Glee. And uh, my manager said, there is really a man named Ryan Murphy who creates Glee. You should call him back. And I thought, no. I said, that couldn't be true. I met the Glee kids in the hotel lobby one day. That couldn't possibly be true. So my manager called him back and he was like, that is Ryan Murphy from Glee. He wants to meet with you. So I met with Ryan Murphy, who created Glee and all these things. And I met with him, and he was like, I want you to be on Glee. I need you to go up against Sue. I met with him, and all of a sudden, I was working on Glee for four seasons. And then he created The New Normal, and I was working as Rocky on The New Normal. And these things just happened, happened for me. You. They just happened for me. But you had to have ability. I did have that. How'd you react to the tragedy in Orlando? Could you believe that? Let me tell you this story. For the past probably three weeks, I've been getting a call from the LGBT community down the, the gay community in Orlando to ask me to host a party there. And I'm, I'm supposed to host a party next month in Orlando. And I've been going back and forth. We've been negotiating with them, going back and forth. And it's been on me to kind of like, maybe I, I'm not going. I've been thinking about not doing the job. I don't know why. It just it had been on me to not do the job. And on Friday, we hear about the young lady at The Voice. 
that was sure. shot. And I thought, oh my God, I don't know if I need to go to Orlando. And then I wake up on Saturday, and this happened at the nightclub at Pulse. And I said, we, we can't go. We were just about to sign the contract for the, the event happening next month in Orlando. And I said, we have to cancel. And I, I told my husband, you have to send them an email, and we have to cancel in Orlando. It already was on me before this ever happened that I didn't really want to do the event. For some reason, no real reason, just that I needed to not do this event in Orlando. And here I am not doing the event in Orlando, and this stuff is happening. It was a real tragedy. You're not going to do it? No. I'm not going to do the event. Because? EV. I think it is, first, it wasn't on me to do it. It was something saying, don't do the event, and this happens. Now I would much rather go. Are you go, afraid? I am afraid. I would much rather go do something for the people now who has passed away than to go and host a party in the club for them. I would rather they do something They might cancel else. that party. Yeah, or well, they're going to probably cancel that. What if they made it and the people who come make donations to the victims? That would, would be something go? much better. I would, would rather do that, yes, than to go to the club and just be dancing and partying at now this you, point. You were on Celebrity Apprentice. Yes. What do you make of Mr. Trump? You know, I, I've always been this kind of fan of Mr. Trump. I've been this fan. People ask me about him all the time, and I've always said, he's always the person that I've known. He was always very true to who he was, yep. and that's what I liked about him. But he has spoken out now in ways that I just, like, I don't, I don't know who that person is. Do you think he's a racist? I know him for 30 years. I've, I've never known. known him when I worked with him to be a racist, but some of the things he said, I could see why one would think that. But while I've worked with him, We've shot together. We've, I've been around him many a times. I've been around his children. I've never known that. Yeah. I've never yeah, felt that. Me too. What do you think of Hillary? I've always liked Hillary. I liked her husband a lot. Yeah. Of course, I've always liked mm. her husband. Are you supporting her? <laughs> I don't want to say who I'm supporting. Because I feel like when you talk about finances and you talk political, it always starts a lot of drama. Uh, I'm always a voter. And I always encourage everyone to go out and vote. It doesn't matter who you vote for. Just vote. Still live in Atlanta? I still live in Atlanta. Yeah. Like it? I like Atlanta. I love Atlanta. Atlanta, for me, is, a, is my home and it's peace. Although I work in Los Angeles and I work in New York City, um, Atlanta is peace. And it's where my children are. It's where my family is. And I feel like we go there and we find peace. Hot in the summer. Very hot in the summer. Hot Atlanta. But there's so much going on in New York City. You hear that? You hear that? Oh, it's this life is in New, New York. York. City. <laughs> yeah, this is New York City. Oh, by the way, I'm in New York with the multi-talented Nene Leakes. You'll, you'll hear that. You know we're in New York. <laughs> Stay with us. We're back with Nene Leakes. She's one of the stars of To Tell the Truth, which is back. It's on ABC. Will we see you again on The Real Housewives of Atlanta? Will we see you on that show again? I will say this. You will probably always see me around that show. You mean around? Around in there in some capacity, I can't walk say. Walk by on the screen. No, <laughs> not really walk by. I would say that you would see me in some capacity. I, I, I may not always be full time. I'm sure I'll be full time at some times and sometimes part time. But you're not gone, gone. Never. Okay. Because there's always been the one thing that's opened up doors for how, me. How real was the drama? The drama is real. Yeah. So nobody says, "Hey, mix it up with her." No, no, no one says mix it up with her. But I would have to say that the producers do have a hand in kind of pushing the envelope a little bit. I don't think some of the things would possibly happen if the producers weren't in there, like making more things. Did you get along with Andy Cohen? I love Andy. Yes, me and him have always gotten along. He's a good boss. He's a good boss. I'm going to see him later. Okay, let's play a game of if you only knew. I'll just okay. throw some questions at you. Real Housewives memory. What's your favorite memory of that show? Uh, one of my favorite memories is going to Africa. They took us to Africa for 10 days. I loved it. I always wanted to go to Africa, and it was amazing. You did shows from there? Yes, we did. Yeah. Dream co-star on screen. Who would you like to work for? Uh, with? Work with? Oh, my God. Uh, maybe Brad Pitt? Not bad. Colin Farrell. I really like Colin. I love Colin. Yeah. Pet peeve? Um, I, I don't like ignorance. <laughs> Me either. Funniest fan encounter? Um, funniest fan encounter. Hmm. I don't know. That's a tough one. Biggest splurge? I just recently bought a new home. In Atlanta? In Atlanta. Big? Pretty big. How many kids yet? I only have two. They grown? One is and one is. One's 17, one's 26. Childhood celebrity crush? Uh, Malcolm Jamal Warner from The Cosby Show. Oh, yeah. Musician we'd be surprised you listen to. Oh, hmm. Adele, maybe? Pretty good. Mm hmm Something you thought to be true but wasn't. Hmm. I thought Santa was real <laughs> <laughs> growing up. Me I too. loved Christmas. Something no one knows about you. 
Um, I think one thing that people don't, I, I have a shy side that people don't know about. A what? A shy side that people don't know about. <laughs> and people think that I totally don't. You're shy. There's a side to me. When is that? I said there's out? a side that you don't know like about. Like once a year. No. <laughs> there is a shy side. Okay. Your most cherished memory. Oh, gosh, my most cherished memory. Uh, probably, my mother didn't raise me, but I spent summers with my mom. And Last I really time you were starstruck. I'm not a real starstruck person. I don't think that it will ever be. If you could travel back in time, where would you go? Oh, gosh, if I could travel back in time, where would I go? I would probably go back to being a little girl. That's one place I'd go back, to being a little girl. Back grew up in, in Atlanta? I grew up in Athens, Georgia. Right outside of Atlanta. University. University of Georgia, home of the Georgia Bulldogs. Favorite thing about being famous? Uh, perks. Yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. Nene Leakes in 10 years. What will you be doing 10 years from today? 10 years from now, I hope that I'm producing and making stars. I don't have to be the star. I like to be behind the camera making stars. Our final moments with Nene Leakes <laughs> right after the break. We're back with Nene Leakes to tell the truth. There's Tuesdays on ABC. I did a comedy too. I loved making people laugh. Me too. You did. Are you? Do you have a set act? I do. I have a set act so for a whole not, hour. Not improvised. I do a little improvising. Sometimes I go off a little bit because I just love to make people laugh too. So I do a little bit both. What is the Nene Leaks iPhone app? Well, my team and I did a little bit of research, and we searched a little bit of about Nene Leaks, and we found out that I have the most memes on social media than anybody. Most what? Memes. Now, you probably don't know that, because are you on social media? Not as that much. Way, huh? Well, there's all these little faces that I've made since I've been on TV, and people love to use them when they're, like, making social media text messaging or email. What kind of faces? Funny faces, like... <laughs> so what happens on the app? So we decided that we would make some Nemojis, where they're fun faces and words. I've used all these one-liners like bloop and close your legs to married men, girl bye, boy bye, I said what I said. All of these fun things, and my fans love them. So what we decided to do is make a line of Nemojis for all these kids out here who like emojis, like on your phones, you can send those funny faces and stuff. So if you want to be a part of the Nemoji life, what you do is you go to the app store, you type in my name, Nene Leaks, and you download Nemojis, and you text to you. I can text you a text, and I can send you a funny face. Nemojis. Nemojis, like my name, Nemojis. How long you had it up? Well, we launched it on Friday, and then we relaunched it again on Monday. Has the app grow? Are you going to post videos or streaming content? Absolutely. We hope. What, to... what about your own reality show? Well, we hope to do that as well. I'm hoping to do a reality show around my one woman show out on the road, making people laugh and all that kind of stuff. These catchphrases, they come to you all the time? All the time. You get new ones? All the time. Like just from like talking to you or being around people, we just come up with new one liners to say. Okay, you like bloop. Bloop. <laughs> so nasty, so rude. <laughs> you sound funny saying that. Girl, bye. <laughs> I like that. We have some social media questions for you. Corey Anderson on the Larry King Now blog. Is there a stigma attached to reality TV stars? Yes. And that is what? Um, I think people think that reality stars sometimes don't have a real talent. And um, that's not true. I mean, I'm sure a lot of us has proven it. There's some that can sing amazingly. There's girls who can act. I'm one of them. There are people who can do comedy. There's girls who can do a lot of things. Don't so, make light of them. Yeah, yeah. There are some that really have talent. Corey Anderson also asked, do you watch other reality TV? I'm a reality TV fanatic. I what love do you it. think of the Kardashians? Um, I love the Kardashians. I, I actually have worked with them before. So, Why? Um, I think they're great to watch. They're fun. They're entertaining. It's just pure entertainment. I don't take them too serious. I think you can be mad at them if you take them too serious. I think they're great with fashion. They're beautiful girls. And it's just fun to watch. KGM1016 on Twitter. Have you ever regretted anything you've said or did? I don't really live with regret. So everything I've ever done that I didn't want to do again, I just didn't do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Emily on the Larry King Now blog is a huge fan. Mm -hmm. What do you want your legacy to be? Um, I, I want to be able to inspire people. I want people to learn from my mistake. I just hope to inspire women all around. I'm all about girl power. I want to inspire women. That's what I want to do. I hope my legacy is about inspiring and letting people know they can do anything they want to do, no matter what they, where they came from and what their background was. I'm going to guess your next thing with all the things you got bouncing balls in the air, mm -hmm. you're going to do a book. Yeah, if I've already done one, I'm going to do another one. There's one out already? Yes, there is. I did one about five years ago. You enjoy that? I did it. Other than a, a book, what else do you want to do? 
Oh my gosh, there's so many things. I love to do a movie. I've done television, scripted television. I love. To, I have not done a movie. I love to do a movie. What are you afraid of? Um, I'm not afraid of a lot of things. It's not a lot of things that I'm afraid of. You know, I, 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 I might be a little afraid of death. <laughs> I want to live. I am a lot afraid. <laughs> I want to live a long time. <laughs> do you enjoy being recognized? Um, not all the time. Not all the time, I must say. I don't always enjoy being recognized. you're going through an airport. And... Yeah, I don't always enjoy that. I must say that. You know, again, that's one of those things, celebrity, you know, it's good, and then sometimes it can be annoying at the same time. When you did Chicago, who was the star? Of, of course I was the star, honey. No, but who played Billy? Oh, Billy Flynn. Um, I forget his name, but he, he is a Broadway star. He was a Broadway star. That was a fun show to do. Obviously. An amazing show. And the you the have to understand, when you're phenomenal. on those Broadway shows, those are families. Like the whole, everybody behind the stage, the actors, we're all like one big family. They really take care of you. What about Wednesday matinees? I love it. I love it. The two shows. Every yes, we do two shows, and I'm fine with it. You know you got to do two shows when you sign up to do this. And it's easy. You do two shows, you get used to it. Like, the first time you do you're like, oh, my God, what do we just do? But after that, I mean, you got it. What do you do between shows? Um, I usually just lay in my dressing room or eat or run an errand and come right back. You are a delight. Thank you. It was so nice. My pleasure. Mine as well. Nene Leakes. Big thanks to her. And Nene Lee, be sure to see her on To Tell the Truth, airing Tuesdays on ABC. As always, you can find on Twitter <laughs> at King's Things. See you next time. King now, the one and only Nene Leakes. I think people think that reality stars sometimes don't have a real talent. And um, that's not true. I mean, I'm sure a lot of us has proven it. There's some that can sing amazingly. There's girls who can act. I'm one of them. So my manager called him back and he was like, that is Ryan Murphy from Glee. He wants to meet with you. So I met with Ryan Murphy, who created Glee and all these things. And I met with him and he was like, I want you to be on Glee. I need you to go up against Sue. Being on stage, it brings out a whole nother side of it. When you're on stage and the curtains open, you have to go. There's no stop and rewind. I don't want to say who I'm supporting because I feel like when you talk about finances and you talk political, it always starts a lot of drama. Plus, you like bloop. Bloop. <laughs> so nasty, so rude. <laughs> you sound funny saying Girl that. Girl, bye. <laughs> All next on Larry King Now. Welcome to Larry King. Now we're in New York with Nene Leakes. She's a woman of many talents, actor, host, reality star, author, entrepreneur. Nene shot to fame on Bravo's The Real Housewives of Atlanta and has since expanded her TV resume, acting on shows like Glee and The New Normal. She's also found success on the Broadway stage in Chicago and Cinderella. And now she'll be a panelist on the reboot of the hit game show To Tell the Truth. It airs Tuesdays on ABC. How did that come about? Oh, my gosh. To bring that back. To bring the old to tell the truth back. You know that show, right? I was, so I was we, a guest once years ago. They had a yeah. guest. What I did, and I, they guessed it. We back. revamped it and brought it up to the 21st century. And actually, the producers reached out to me and my team and said, we need someone like Nene that's fun, that'll tell it like it is, and with a lot of personality. we love for her to be a panelist. And so I thought, OK, I need to go and Google to tell the truth, because I totally forgotten it. So I went you were and too Googled. young, weren't you? I, Well, I was young, but I remembered it when I went and Googled it. And I Googled it, and I was like, Got it. That's that show. I'm Larry King. No, I'm Larry King. No, I'm Larry yeah. King. Who's really the real Larry King? And so we have to guess. Only one is the real Larry King, and only one has been sworn to tell the, the truth. truth. And then there's a, do yeah. they still have a, a celebrity panelist where they wear their, yeah. they cover their eyes? Yes. Okay, I have to, we're not covering our eyes, though. We so, don't, no, no, we don't cover our eyes. The panelists do not, the celebrity panels do not, which is Betty White, who you know. Of course. And she has amazing work ethic. Wait a minute, if you don't cover your eyes when the celebrity surprise comes up, what do you see? Well, what happens is when they come out, the three that are, have been sworn to tell the truth, on our show, the reason I said we, we brought it up to the 21st century, we have people like the person who invented the selfie stick. And oh. we have to prove who invented the selfie I stick. Know. We have to prove who 